Good morning, NTC kids. Welcome to week two of October, where we're our whole theme is called Unmasked, Drop the Act, and we're talking about integrity, choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And last week, we learned from Daniel to be truthful with our whole lives. And this week, being truthful with God keeps us close to God. Now, you know, when someone's not truthful with you, it kind of separates your relationship, doesn't it? Now, we can say things that kind of seem truthful sometimes. I'm going to give you two facts about me, and I want you to pitch, pick which one is true and which one is not true. So, my favorite snack is apples and peanut butter. Or my favorite thing to shop for are shoes. Which one do you think is true? The first one or the second one? Mm, I hear different answers, I think. But it's the second one. I love shoes. They're my favorite thing to shop for. And I like lots of shoes. Fun colored shoes, different print shoes. They're my favorite. And probably some of, the, some of you guessed that because I might have complimented you on your shoes. So kind of funny, but you know, some of you might have picked apples and peanut butter. I really love that, but that's probably not my favorite snack. I would say nachos is my favorite snack. I love nachos. But so in today's Bible story, we're going to hear how being untruthful doesn't even hurt our relationships around us, but also hurts our relationship with God. So let's stand up, let's worship together, and then we'll meet back here for small group. a breath you had a plan for my every step you promised to always be by my side i believe that you are the way you are the truth you are the lie so i sing this to you you keep your promises every day i will believe in everything that you say yeah in the dark i know you're making a way jesus i will trust Hi, I'm Graham, and today we're talking about integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. 
It's really important to be truthful always. To be yourself. To not hide behind a mask. Okay, fine. Okay. I know what you're thinking. Something fishy's going on around here. Why is Graham wearing a mask? Well, I messed up. And I don't want you to see. I did something I wasn't supposed to and I'm embarrassed about it. But we are talking about being truthful. So, here goes. I'm sorry. I can't do it. It's just it's too embarrassing. I borrowed my sister's super special hair shining shampoo even though she told me not to. Now I'm scared to let you see what happened. I'm such a, such a scaredy cat. This is one of the reasons why being truthful in what you say and do is so hard. If I show people the real me, they might laugh at me or make fun of me. They might think I'm a bad person. They might not love me. Well, you know what? Integrity is worth the risk. <gasps> nope, I'm not ready. In today's story, we'll learn why being truthful doesn't have to be so scary. Y'all come back soon now, partners. I'm never taking this hat off. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 John, chapter 1. Verse 9. One of Jesus' closest friends, the Apostle John, shared important words from God in one of his letters. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, He will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Let's see how this truth might play out today. Tori could barely contain her excitement when she showed her dad the small plastic rectangle with her face on it, her brand new driver's license. See, I can drive myself now. If you had a car. Mom said I can borrow her car some days. If you pay for gas. If I pay for gas. Cell phone. Phone off while I'm driving. Tori held up her phone and shut it off. That's right, and. No passengers, no driving after 9 p.m., Full stop at every stop sign, music at a moderate volume. I got it. I guess you do. So can I borrow mom's car to go play tennis with Keisha? Please? Be home by nine. Thanks, dad. Even though Tori had been driving with her mom and dad for months now, her stomach did a flip when she first started the car. Driving carefully out of the driveway, her hands white knuckled on the steering wheel for the first mile until she pulled into the spot in the tennis courts at the high school. She was almost relaxed. Her best friend, Keisha, waved. <laughs> nice park job. Tori hopped out and checked her spacing. Yeah, okay, I'm a little crooked, but there's no one else here. The two friends played for more than an hour before Tori checked time. Oops, gotta get home. By the time Tori had stowed out her gear and fiddled with the temperature controls, Keisha was already gone. Here goes. As Tori backed the car out of the spot, she reached over to adjust the radio. I cannot deal with mom's music. Oh no. Tori braked fast. She put the car in park and hopped out. She had just hit the light pole and left a small dent in the bumper. It's not very big. Tori reached for her phone to call dad, but she had already turned off her phone for the drive. I I'll just tell them when I get home. Tori stayed tense the whole way home. Oh, they'll never let me borrow the car again. But it's just a small dent, and Mom's car is really old anyway. Dad was working on his Jeep in the garage when Tori pulled in. Hey, sweetie, how was it? Tori opened up her mouth to tell Dad about the dent, but she couldn't seem to do it. Fine, great. My serve's getting a lot better. Tori avoided Mom, too. She tried to go straight to her room and read, but she couldn't focus. I might as well go to bed. Most evenings, Tori used a gratitude app on her phone as a reminder to thank God for the good things in her day. Uh, Friday, let's see. But Tori didn't want to think about her day or talk to God at all. Finally, she turned off the light, but even so, she couldn't fall asleep. 
Next morning, she came down to find Dad making French toast. Maple syrup or strawberries and whipped cream. Both. Where's Mom? She went out to get groceries. Should be back any minute. As Tori sat down to her favorite breakfast, memories of the dented bumper started flooding back. I guess I'm not really that hungry right now. The garage door opened. Mom shouldered her way inside, carting heavy groceries. Would you believe it? Someone dinged my bumper in the parking lot and took off. Tori's heart sank. She wished she could simply disappear. Did you see it happen? No, and they didn't leave a note. Hit and run. I'll take a look. Uh, Mom? Mom glanced up and saw Tori. Hi, Tor. I didn't mean to rain on your morning. What's up? Uh, nothing. I, I mean, I, I'm gonna go out and rake some leaves. That would be super helpful. Rakes against the back wall. Tori couldn't meet Mom's eyes when she walked out the door. She raked as hard and as fast as she could, but she couldn't sweep away what happened. It's not like I lied, ex exactly. Oh, who am I kidding? Unlocking her phone, Tori scrolled through her messages for a message from her small group leader, Lisa, that she had sent weeks ago. Wanted to share. Oh, here's the verse. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Tori scanned the verse again and sighed. She dropped her rake and plopped right in the middle of her leaf pile. So, um, God, I really messed up. I mean, you know all about it, but I dented mom's car and I hid the truth. I lied. I'm really sorry. As Tori lay in the scratchy leaves, staring up at the bright blue sky, she felt a sense of peace for the first time all day. Thank you, God. After a few minutes, Tori scrambled to her feet, brushed the leaves off, and went towards the house. Mom, Dad, there's something I have to tell you. Tori knew she'd be paying to fix the car, and she might lose driving privileges for a while, but it was worth the cost to know she wasn't hiding the truth anymore. A long time after Jesus died and came back to life, one of his disciples named John wrote this, God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Do you know what that means? It means with God, it doesn't matter if we've messed up or broken the rules or if we're embarrassed about something that we've done. We don't have to hide from him. He will forgive every wrong thing. With God, you can be the real you and he won't laugh at you or make fun of you. He won't think you're a bad person and most importantly, God will always love you. Yeehaw! Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for all the wrong things you've done and all the wrong things you'll ever do. That's why when you're truthful with God, you don't have to be scared. In fact, here's the one thing to remember today. Being truthful with God keeps you close to Him. So when you mess up, don't hide it. Talk to God about it. Tell Him how you really feel. It should feel good to get all these things off your chest. Like, maybe it will feel good for me to show you what it looks like when you don't listen to your sister, and when you don't follow the instructions on a super special hair shining shampoo bottle. Nope, no, no way. <laughs> I'll talk to God about it. See you next time. Oh, lather, rinse, repeat. Lather, rinse, repeat. Why didn't I repeat, God? Why didn't I? Oh, oh you saw nothing. Hey, I got a couple magnets here. Welcome to small group. We're going to, uh, oh, well, geez, I didn't even have to get them so close. So how close do I have to get them before they'll pretty, not very far apart, huh? They attract right to one another. And then let's see, oh, and they can, they'll grab anything with metal. This must be coated, cause it's not, it's not, um, magnets are kind of fun. I don't know if you have any at, at home on the fridge, you can kind of play with them. But what if you turn them over and you try to get them to go together? Actually, those I didn't turn over, let's see. Actually, I can feel the push, or, 
what should I say, the resistance apart. They, they will not go to get their, their, actually that's kind of funny. It's like almost hurting, but if I flip it over, how quickly they stick together. Um, when we faced each other, they came together, but when we put them apart, what do they do? They repelled each other. You know what? One is a relationship with, um, with God, and one of them is, is, talks about a relationship with God. You know what happens? When we are dishonest, you know, God stays the exact same. But when we're dishonest, you know, we're good and we've done well and we've, you know, been what we consider good. We're like totally attracted to our relationship with God. But what happens when we're dishonest with somebody or something? We kind of, we flip over and we start to, we start to kind of resist him, don't we? Resist that. Or we try to do lots of really good things in order. But you know what? God never turns around. It's us who turns around. And he's right there to forgive us even when we mess up. Um, at some point, everyone's messed up. Your mom, your dad, grandma, me, everyone. We all have at some point think our way is better than God's way. And we choose to be dis dishonest. And at a lot of times when, we're, when we mess up, we kind of try to hide what we've done or we try to make up for it, like I said before, by doing lots of good things. But the awesome, most amazing, wonderful thing is that following God is that we don't ever have to be afraid to tell him when we've messed up. He knows anyways. So, and when we're honest, it's like turning that magnet back around. He forgives us and he accepts us and he's right there to give us all that love. Now, remember this week, if you're tempted to do something that keeps you from God, you need to find yourself acting like it's no big deal. Think about these magnets and remember that being truthful with God keeps you close to him. Have a great week. I cannot wait to come back. I love this month's theme.